This is Biology 2252 for the lab. We're looking at lab guide on the blood vessels. And if you've noticed, the anatomy key for the models is quite extensive. We're going to look at the torso trunk model now. The vessels that you can see on this model are labeled HT. We're gonna start with the heart. The major vessels for the systemic circulation coming off of the heart start with the aorta. The aorta creates an arch, and from the arch, we have the brachiocephalic artery, also called the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and the left subclavian artery. Moving up the neck, that left common carotid becomes the internal and external carotid arteries. On our model, the internal carotid artery is the one that is posterior. The external branch is to the anterior. The brachiocephalic trunk off of the aorta becomes the right common carotid artery and the right subclavian artery, which are better seen on another model. Moving away from the arch, the aorta bends and goes down the posterior wall of the body and becomes the thoracic aorta within the thoracic region, and then it becomes the abdominal aorta in the abdominal region. There are several branches that come off of the abdominal aorta. The celiac trunk is the first one in the abdominal region. The celiac trunk supplies blood to the common hepatic artery, which goes to the liver, the splenic artery, which goes to the spleen, and the left gastric artery, which will go to the stomach. Below the celiac trunk is the superior mesenteric artery. And down below that is the inferior mesenteric artery. Just above, you'll see the gonadal artery and the other gonadal artery. On, on the newer model in the A&P lab, you do not see where the abdominal aorta branches into the common iliac arteries, but you do see the internal iliac artery and you do see the external right before it's going to transition into the femoral artery. This is the older torso trunk model. And you can see here on the abdominal aorta where it splits into the right and the left common iliac arteries. Here you also see where it branches into the internal iliac and the external iliac arteries. The iliac artery, external iliac artery, becomes the femoral artery. Still looking at the torso trunk model, I wanna go through the venous drainage with you now. So all of the vessels that are labeled here in blue are going to be um, bringing blood back to the heart. And so we've got right and left subclavian veins, and these are going to dump into the 
brachiocephalic trunk, which is here and here. So when we were looking at the arterial system, um, the brachiocephalic trunk, which was an artery off of the aortic branch, there was only one. Here, when we're looking at the venous drainage, there are two brachiocephalic trunks. So one right here again, and one right here. So, and remember, I said that a trunk is going to allow for additional branching. And so these trunks are accepting blood from multiple branches. The right subclavian vein over here. And then it's also going to receive blood from the jugular. So it's going to receive blood from both the internal and the external jugular veins. But on these models, it does not show you the external, only the internal. So this is the internal jugular vein draining down into the brachiocephalic trunk. Brachiocephalic trunk, brachiocephalic trunk, both of these are going to drain into the superior vena cava. And that ends up in the right atrium of the heart. Coming down to the leg, blood coming up the leg, returning to the heart through the femoral vein, enters into the external iliac vein, which then enters into the common iliac vein and into the inferior vena cava. This will continue up to the heart until it'll dump into the right atrium. You also have renal vein, renal vein. You have a gonadal vein, so this is going to drain blood away from the gonad. And on the left-hand side, the gonadal vein drains into the renal vein before it empties into the inferior vena cava. On the right side, the gonadal vein dumps directly into the inferior vena cava. 